Hello everybody. I was gonna, I started working on this dog and realized this is a good uh, teaching example. Uh, we got a corgi here. He's a fur ball and he is just blowing, 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 blowing. So much coat. So I've already washed him. I've already got him into the conditioners I like to use. Um, I definitely, you want a super clean dog. You can see he's just like chunks and chunks and chunks of hair where you can't even like part it and get down to where you can see to his skin through a lot of it. Um, so yeah, just heavy blowing coat. It's proper, it's appropriate, it's exactly what the coat's supposed to be doing. Um, but uh, yeah, it can make a mess over someone's house and if you leave them with the heavy undercoat like this without getting it all worked out and brushed out, you end up with, uh, you know, the skin can't breathe on um, so you're more likely to get skin issues um, definitely the dog is a lot hotter and a lot less comfortable. Um, yeah, so there's lots of reasons to work this out and the best place to do it is a groom shop because if you tried doing this in your sink or your bathroom, you'd have quite the disaster of hair everywhere and it's only going to get worse. <laughs> right, handsome boy? So, um, I said my favorite products, you guys mostly know by now, but I like the Bark Basic Citrus Plus. Absolute favorite shampoo. I use this as my secondary shampoo because it's just nice and moisturizing, gets them clean, doesn't leave them grimy. This, however, is the magic for heavy coats, um, shedding co double sh uh, shedding coats and matted dogs. And it's honestly great on poodles and things with a poof coat where you're trying to get just the coat nice and heavy and you know the, the hair shaft itself to be nice and heavy. And then I use this as a cream rinse. Um, so this guy is going through all four of those and oh and then the stuff is a coat spray there we go that's the bottle of it this is super important too um, I dilute it out I usually use about an ounce to is that like a 32 ounce bottle I think I don't know how big you are but this stuff seriously big guy all right so uh, I mix my cream rinse or my hot oil stuff down my uh, re-moisturizer down I had to make a new bottle so it's got some chunks in it it hasn't totally broken down yet but yeah, just the biggest thing to do is just work it into the areas where he's especially matted, especially those places where I can't see through to the skin. I wanna make sure that I've got it nice and deep and worked into those. He's like, oh, that's the best back scratch ever. <laughs> you like that, huh? You did a good stuff. Oh, happy <laughs> boy. Yeah, he's a good boy. And then, hold on, sorry, I don't have my tripod today. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> That's all it just got rinsed off my hand. <laughs> and then I like using the center setting because you see how it gets all the way to the skin and kind of raises the coat up. So it's going to allow me to push this conditioner deeper into the areas where I was having trouble getting it manually. Hopefully y'all can still hear me over the spray. And if you actually watch, like, layers of coat just start working out with the spray nozzle. So I spend so much more time in the bathtub than I would uh, with a brush on the table. Um, bathtub and blow dry is where you get probably a good 80% of the coat out and you make the job so much easier when you go to go to the brush. Most dogs are going to be a lot more tolerant of their time in the bathtub where when you got them on the table and you're trying to take a brush through them, a lot of them, if they're not very compliant personality, you can see just like chunks of hair falling out of there. <laughs> just work it out. So yeah, I, I give myself plenty of time with the tub and just work them, work them, work them. Yeah, I like to get in there. Usually I'm two-handed in here if I'm holding the phone. Um, so one hand's rinsing, the other hand's still scrubbing and just pushing all the conditioners up deeper into the coat, making sure I'm like getting in there with my fingers and opening up all the clumpy spots. And just working through it. You're such a sweet boy. He's a happy boy. He likes his bath time. <laughs> Yeah, most of them really appreciate, um, especially the double coats, they really appreciate getting their skin scratched because if they've got this heavy of a coat, their skin hasn't felt a good itching or a good set of fingernails in a long time. <laughs> yeah, like even with this, you can barely, barely find his skin because there's just so much coat. But um, yeah, so I usually, like I said, run through with my re-moisturizer. I've had it called hot oil when I started, so I tend to refer to it that way, but it's really just the re-moisturizing conditioner. There again, you can start seeing the chunks of coat, like how much coat is left behind from where I'm spraying down. The hose just gets piled. Ah, yeah, that's a good spot to see it. Oh, there it goes. Just working the coat out. Lit. So, yeah, give yourself plenty of time in the tub. 
because the tub's where it's at. And have patience. Know that you and the dog are both going to be happier working through it this way than you are if you are uh, trying to take a brush through this and actually pull this coat out of their body. Um, once it's clean, once it's conditioned, once it's got all the coat sprays in it, it works out so much easier. Um, so this is then my cream rinse. I don't usually rinse the re-moisturizer all the way through. I tend to just throw a spot of this in the mix and run it through with it. Um, not typically first thing, usually about once I've got that halfway rinsed. But with the re-moisturizer, especially in a situation like this, I like to let it sit in there a good long time. Good boy, and I'm gonna have to get him to turn around because I haven't gotten that side with the hose very well yet. So you can see he's still just loaded where this side's actually starting to, eh, yeah, no, that's a pretty big difference between the two sides. Like this side, you can actually see to the skin for a lot of the dog, and this side, he's still loaded up with clumps and clumps where I can't even get those to park to where you can see to the skin. <laughs> so lots of work still to do. I'll come back when I uh, get to the blow dryer and explain my process with the blow dryer too. All right, see y'all in a bit. Okay, so once I've gone over the dog about five times, my hand's getting in there while I'm rinsing, making sure that everything feels, look at all that coat, uh, everything feels nice and suck fat, or um, rinsed properly. And you can just kind of get in there and feel while you're rinsing and making sure that there's nothing that feels like conditioner, nothing that's got that kind of almost slimy feel. You just want to feel coat, and then I give them a good spray down with the stuff. And then this is one of my other tricky, tricky things. Let me see if I can set the phone someplace where it'll balance. One of the things that I do that I find is super, super helpful is to put, maybe, all right, I make sure that I get every last inch sprayed down nice and heavily with the stuff, and on a dog with this much coat and this much tightness to it where it's all, you know, the mats are all buried in there, it skins under layers and layers, I'll actually, once I get them all sprayed down with the stuff, Oh, gosh. Oops, sorry guys. Ah, my apologies. That's too good of a lesson to <laughs> not do, but I'll actually go over them with the hose on the spray setting again and just kind of get them wet so that I get a chance to push. I don't want a full rinse, but I just kind of want to get them wet everywhere so I get a chance to work the stuff all the way deep into the coat. Um, so it's almost, you know, I'm probably rinsing a portion of it out, which is fine with me because I just want it all the way to the skin so then they get another good rubbing and scrubbing all over. And then, once I feel that made it all the way through, especially his butt, because he's just so much cold there. He's a little butt. Heavy wiggle butt. Again, even just that, you can see how much hair comes off just from me playing around rubbing on him and stuff. So, now it's, everything's a tool, right? <laughs> your hands are one of your biggest tools. Say, buddy, good boy. Uh, uh, all right, so. I go ahead and do one more round of the stuff just to make sure it's on the top layer too. Oh boy. And run it through one more time. Like I said, I dilute it pretty, it's about an ounce to either, maybe either 16, I don't know, but yeah, it's, it's like an ounce to either a 16 or 32 ounce bottle of water. Um, you know, I guess those are 16 because my shampoo bottles are 32. It's probably about 16 ounces. So it's like an ounce to 16. Um, there you go. So yeah, and then once we get all of that accomplished, and she got a phone bad dog. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Come here, big guy. And I tend to go through with my little squeegee towels. I still love these and just try to pull as much moisture out, especially the, with them I don't worry so much about the body coat because I'm going to be doing a lot of blow drying there anyway. Um, it's not about getting them dry, it's about using the dryer to accomplish my goals. Oh boy. So I tend to just kind of go more for the feet and the undercarriage and like where the short hairs are that I can really pull some water out with this. Go oh, baby. And like the ears, under the jaw, those kinds of places. Like I said, mostly the feet. Oh, and by the way, with the way that he's been chewing on the little front feet like that, um, that remoisturizing conditioner is amazing on the spots that they're like super chewy about too. I find it's uh, super useful there. But uh, anyway, um, so next thing, let's see if I can set you guys back down. Does that work for a sec? Yeah, so 
switch out from my flat to I prefer the point. Okay, I actually gets locked into position. I don't even know if I'm in front of you guys. There you are. <laughs> and then it's about to get loud. Careful, buddy. Keep your feet on the thing. So, the two areas on top, he's not so heavily matted because that egg gets trapped and rust and it doesn't tend to get as wet. But once you get to the lower areas, he's going to carry a bit more of the pump. where the coat's really stuck, I want just that little wiggle. And I just want to kind of try to get through, like, just slowly bring it up, slowly bring it down, and just kind of work all around. Until as many of those little...
and we got the big guy pretty well blown out all the way and pretty much dry. Um, I do let them sit under a cage dryer for a little bit and currently what I'm using, I actually really like these. They're just a little dryer that comes from Costco. Super fan next. Um, it has a few settings, no heat. Uh, I think they're like 70 or 80 bucks, something like that, but they're just a nice amount of flow. So it just, he's got a you know good size cage space. And just let the air flow through the cage and I'll get into, I catch all the parts that are just a little damp still and help make everything dry a little quicker. But then for brushes, what I like to use on guys like these, um, I find this guy, I can't, almost can't read it anymore. It's a Chris Christensen, it's their wood pin brush. And I find it works amazing on most things for just like the first brush through it's not the most thorough brush ever it's not going to get all your like tiny little pin mats and everything worked out but it's really really nice for just the basic get to your next good boy stay stay good boy um for just like the basic getting the coat organized and to be honest it does work pretty good if it's got if the coat's got enough length it works um really nicely but yeah see it's already starting to catch on those couple of spots where there's still a little bit of nodding. I would not harass Lexi. She has her little hidey hole and she wants to be left alone. <laughs> Come here, big guy. Good boy. Stay stay. No, turn back this way. Good boy. But yeah, so um, pin brush or the wood pin brush definitely helps a lot with organizing the coat. Um, and then what I typically go to next. Sorry, guys. And no tripod today. Um, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Let's see if I zoom out one. That helps. Nope. <laughs> All right, I just have to hold the thing. Um, but yeah, so wood pin. Then I tend to go to a slicker. We'll zoom back in. I was liking that better. Good boy. And I tend to go to a slicker just to get whatever because it's going to catch stay more of the coat is going to trap a little bit more of the shedding stuff and get it nice and into the teeth. Now once I think I've got a good bit of organization happening with all of that um, done, these are not sold under this brand anymore, um, but these are one of my favorite just get everything worked out if the coat's a little bit, I'm sorry, this is why we use the other brushes first, is this is going to catch everything. Um, and work it through. So I'll come back up there and work the wood brush first before I work on this guy. But this just gets, you can feel it, it just gets all the way down to the skin and gets everything super deep. Um, and then, so like that guy there, it's just gonna work it right out with no problems. Again, I need two hands to do the whole job, so uh, you don't get to watch me do the whole thing. <laughs> but, but just to get a good idea. Um, so any of the places like where he's got like under his butt and under his neck, I'm just going to work it with a wood brush until I feel like I can get the wood brush all the way through it. Then I go through with the slicker until I feel like I can get the slicker all the way through it. But, um, like I said, it's just, it's absolutely amazing how much coat we have, we got out of here and how easy the brush work's going to be on all of this. Good boy. Because we spent so time, I mean, I, he was in the tub for about an hour, um, between the bath and the blow dry and all that. Um, so it's not that we don't do a lot of work, but if you do enough work in the bathtub, there you go. So you see all those guys just kind of push back right a little. Good boy. So those guys are clinging in. They're pretty darn good. They're pretty happy with their position in life. So this just kind of helps break up the things that are loose enough, loosen up the things and get them a little bit looser. And to be honest, it really is getting a lot of those to just kind of fall out. Good boy. So whatever doesn't come out for that, come through with this guy and just see what else we can get out. Oh boy. Not the easiest thing to do one-handed. <laughs> and then we come in here with this guy. And there, it's all brushing right through. Good boy. Good boy. See how quickly that all cleared out? So a whole quarter of them's pretty much brushed. And then I always follow through with a Greyhound style comb. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Like everything's already brushed out and all that matting's gone. So like I said, 
spend enough time with the bath and the right shampoos and right conditioners and the blow dryer, you really don't have to spend that much time brushing them out. And like I said, he's not getting mad at anything. Nothing's catching or pulling or being difficult. It's just running right through. Um, and then I do keep one of these type of things around. I don't even know what brand this one is, but just a coat rake. Um, they do have kind of a sharp blade on the inside. So I'm not going to use that until I know that I've got all the undercoat, um, uh, see, until I know he's brushed out completely. So I want to be able to take a comb through him first before I'm going to take this because I don't want this catching knots and ripping things and causing trouble with the coat because then it'll start tearing up the mature coat, um, not the proper coat. So they've got the double layers, they've got the silky coat, and then they've got all the sheddy undercoat. What I want to use this for is just to catch the undercoat. But if he's got knots and such, it's going to catch a lot more than just the loose little undercoat that just wants to floof out. Good boy. So you see how much undercoat that's taken loose? I don't want it grabbing the mature coat and the, ni the nice um, gloss coat, the top coat, and ripping into it and then causing the coat to, basically when you, say this, when you cut, Lexi didn't him alone, he's not going to bother you. Um, when you cut the coat on a dog like this, it messes with the natural shedding cycle. So the dog has a natural cycle where they shed through and you saw how nice and easily all that coat came out like that is just you know it's like the dog i wish i had taken a picture when he walked in he's fur balls sticking out everywhere you've all seen the type um so when you don't ever cut the coat ever the coat sheds naturally it sheds properly and it's easy to just bathe and brush it out like it just falls out when you start trimming the coat it messes with the texture of everything it makes the coat not want to let go of the undercoat so I would even consider this doing a little bit of trimming. So I don't use um, something that's bladed. I don't use anything that's going to like break or, or mess up the guard coat. Um, if there's any matting or if there's any knotting still left going on. Because I really don't want to damage the healthy coat that's supposed to still be there. Because I want that coat to do its natural thing and to shed properly and to let, you know, actually let go when we ask it to. Um, one of the other things too I find for undercoat is just a little zoom groom little one of these little buddies and they come with much pointier teeth but over time they get worn down but and this is going to do something similar it's not going to get quite as much out as the coat rake is but you're not going to run into any chances of damaging the coat if you're using one of these guys all it does is like when i was running my fingers through you saw in the bath when i was running my fingers through i was just getting so much hair covering my hands this kind of does the same thing it just kind of catches all the loose undercoat and takes it out with. So any of my short haired breeds and especially like the faces where the hair is extra short around the eyes and stuff and the muzzle, like this is one of my favorite things to use. Um, your Labradors, this will get tons of coat out. Um, and like all your short haired, any of your short haired type. Shedding my Ridgeback, this is like almost the only thing I need to use on the Ridgeback. It gets a ton of coat out of her. But anyway, so that's kind of my process for dematting. Um, <laughs> And obviously he'll get his toenails trimmed and his feet neatened up. But other than that, I won't trim a stinking thing because, like I said, I want that natural shedding process to work and do what it's supposed to do. Um, so he definitely goes through it really well for as much hair as he has. You come in kind of a pigsty, don't you? You had fun this month. <laughs> but anyway, thanks all. I'll get this out to you all soon. Bye.